Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about the difference between struct and class. Here we have a struct of person t, and it has a name of string and an age of unsigned integer. And we also has a class of person, and、uh, it also has a name of string and age of unsigned integer. Now, what's the difference between these two? The difference is for struct, its data members are public by default, and、uh, for class, its data members are private by default. So this is the only difference between struct and class as far as the language is concerned. But usually, we'll add another level of semantic difference between struct and class. Struct is used for small passive objects that carry public data and have no or few basic member functions. In, a, in other words, a struct is used for a data container, and a class is usually used for bigger and therefore more complicated active objects. That carry private data, and it interface with outside world through public member functions. In other words, a class is used for more complex data structure. But this is just a convention. There's nothing in the language that enforces you to follow this convention. For example, nothing can stop you from giving the struct a private data integer height, and nothing can stop you from giving a class a public data integer height. However, this is a good convention to follow, and you'd better follow it unless you have some special reason. Another convention is a class data member are usually named with a trailing underscore, and a struct data member are named as the same way you name a regular variable. Now, in the main function, I create a person t, p t, and I can access p t's data member directly, p t dot h. For example, I want to print it out, and then I create a person p, and I also want to print out p's age. This will not compile because h underscore is a private data of the person. If I really want to access the private data of a class, I have to provide some public interface for that. Unsigned age, and all this function does is return the age underscore. And then in the main function, I can call age. And since this function only fetches the data of the age and it doesn't change it, so we should make this function const function. And if later on I do want to change the age, then we need to provide another public function to change the age. And in the main function, we can set the age to a different value. So this function is usually called getter or accessor, and this function is usually called setter or mutator. And a getter function is almost always a const function. Now some of you may want to start complaining. If we have a private data member. And we defined getter and setter for this private data member. Then, what's the point of making this data member private? We could just make it 
public, and all of a sudden it saves us the additional effort of defining these these fun member functions. When we create object-oriented code, we want to separate the interface from the implementation. We want to encapsulate the complicated implementation and only talk to the outside world through interfaces. And in, the, in this case, these functions are interface, and these variables are implementation. If you make the data member public, essentially you are exposing the internal implementation to the outside world, which usually will bring a lot of headache in the long run. For example, if you later on decide that age underscore is not an appropriate name for this variable, um, you want to change it. With setter and getter function, it is very easy to change the variable name. But if the data member is public and your client has been using it all, the, all over the place, then you have to change this variable in many different places. Another example is if you want to add some rules to uh, setting the age, for example, a person's age should not be larger than 200, then with the set function, you can easily add the rule check at the beginning of this function. But if the variable is public, then there's no easy way to enforce that rule. So this is the idea of having setter and getter function uh, instead of making the variable public. On the other hand, having too many of setter and getter function is also not a good design practice. If I have to provide setter and getter for many of my private data member, it means that my data need to be used by somebody else. If that is the case, why the data belongs to me? why the data not belong to somebody else. So having too many of setter and getter function indicates there's some problem with my design. Maybe I should architect my design models in a different way. So in general, you should avoid using too many of setter and getter function in your code. As a side note, some of you might be curious why we have this weird convention of trailing underscore for class data member. In the very old days, many people use m underscore to denote a class da data member. But then people start to think, why using two characters to denote class data member if we could just use one? So some people think of using leading underscore to uh, for that purpose. And actually, the leading underscore is the official naming, naming convention in Python for a private class data member. But the problem with C++ is the leading underscore is already used for other purpose. It is used for global variables. It is used for the internal implementation related variables particularly the underscore followed by a capital letter and underscore underscore are widely used in the internal implementation. This is why people have inven invented the trailing underscore notation for the class data member. But again, a convention is a convention. There's nothing right or wrong here. And it is most important for you to be consistent with the existing convention that is already used in the project that you are working on. A summary of what we have talked about today. Number one, use struct for passive objects with public data, and use class for active objects with private data. Number two, use setter and getter function to access a class's data instead of making that data public. Number three, avoid making setter and getter function if possible. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. See you next time.